Hi, everybody. I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com. And today I'm with Joan Cloth Zenard. Joan has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. And she also has extensive training as a GAL, which is a guardian ad litem. And she's also qualified as an ADA advocate. Joan previously presented a webinar for love fraud on proving parental alienation in court. And today we're going to be talking about her new webinar, which is Breaking Through to Alienated Children. So thank you so much, Joan, for being here. I'm so glad to see you again. Oh, so am I, Donna. Great. All right. Well, let me ask the first question. When children are being alienated by one of their parents, what are they experiencing? It's psychological abuse. And we end up with a problem with the children's being delayed in their emotional mental development, which affects their executive functioning skills. They literally cannot critically think that something they're being told really doesn't match with what they know. That's one piece of it. They are very torn. They go into self-protection mode. And because of all of this, it delays and sets them back to be able to function in a healthy format as an adult. Mm -hmm. And it also interferes with social development? Very much. They are, they will claim they're independent, but they're really not. And what happens is they don't communicate well with others because their social skills are lacking, their ability to, to do many of the necessary components that they should have learned and through their role models. If the role model isn't teaching it to them, then they don't get it. If they don't have access to a role model, they're not going to get it. Wow. So how does parental alienation then affect children's growth and development? They are delayed in their executive functioning. So there's about 11 categories under executive functioning, one of which is organizational, one of which is motivational, one of which is, um, con con you know, I'm sorry, conflict resolutions. One of them is being able to critically think. These skills are mandatory in order to function in the real world, especially at work. If you're not organized, you can't keep up and you will have, tend to have more stress and more anxiety, which this builds upon their mental health and their emotional health. If somebody's living with constant PTSD, stress and anxiety, their ability to prepare themselves to adjust to things, to handle change, immediate changes, to be able to even be present in at times isn't even available to them because they, their skills are so delayed. Um, I could give examples if that would help. Well, how about one example? Okay. Um, in this case, it was my stepson. He we were at a, I was at a memorial service for a close friend who was a musician and the musician's son had his band up on the stage with several of his friends. And one of the musicians looked a little familiar, but I wasn't sure. So I went around to ask a couple of people if they recognized him. When I got around to the widow and I asked her if she recognized him, she turned around to look at him, turned back around to say something to me. And this man jumped off the stage lunged at me, shoving me as hard as he could to the ground on top of other people in front of the widow. This turns out to be my stepson, who I have maybe seen five year, five times since 1996. Now, ask me how old you thought this child was. How old was he? 33. Oh, geez. This is a prime example of where a child's emotional, mental um, acuity, their development is so delayed that his behavior is that of a teenager, a young adult, a young teenager. He doesn't understand that this is a memorial service for his best friend's father and that this isn't appropriate action, nor is it appropriate to attack somebody who's twice your age even. So there's an example, and this is a prime example of how that delay has affected his ability to actually 
be appropriate in public. Wow. So this will be a two-part webinar. The first part is about understanding how parental alienation affects children. And the second part will be offering strategies for how parents can help their kids day to day. So when parents take your webinar, what will they learn? Well, you're going to learn what to say and what not to say. You're going to learn that the children will key in on certain things. And some things will completely turn them off. Like I said, what to say, what not to say. Um, you're going to learn that even if the kids are aged out of the system, there are little ways that we can send out positive, healthy messages to them on social media. There are other things that if they, if you have mutual friends that we can work things and maybe create a, a chance for the child to see that parent in a positive light. Um, and remember, a lot of this is that these children only know one story. Mm -hmm. So we're going to learn how do we slowly help them to get an epiphany, to critically think. If we can get them into therapy, how do we help the therapist to help the child go through the stages of development that they have missed that are causing these executive functioning delay? Well, you know, I know that this is going to be a fabulous webinar. I've seen the material, obviously, and it's very thorough. Uh, you know, first, we're going to give people the empirical knowledge that they need, and then we're going to provide all the tips and strategies. So uh, thank you, Joan, and we're looking forward to this presentation. Oh, you're welcome.